So welcome back. I'm super excited that we're all here together. I'm also conscious of Amira's experience and Mel's and Nick's. So thanks for joining remotely and definitely speak up if you can't hear or if there's anything I can do to enhance your experience. Okay. Um, I'll ask folks here present to speak loudly so that you can hear as well as possible. Okay. Um, so I don't see members of the public online or here. So I think we have the public comment. I sent around the minutes from the previous meeting and most of you have those in your paper packet except for common. Any questions or changes to the previous minutes? Uh, what was that chat? Maybe what was the chat? I just wrote a note to the manager and they talked to the chat. Great. Okay. In to the minutes? Fantastic. You know, at some point, if you read them, you'll learn I don't necessarily take perfect bits. Um, all right, membership, committee membership updates. Caitlin and today Sigrid have stepped down from the committee, which makes me sad. Um, Sigrid said that she does not have the time. Caitlin said this didn't feel like a fit for her. Um, the effect of that is that our committee, our community members are Tina, Dottie, um, just keep, I'm just, okay, um, so sad to lose those two members, um, I don't think at this stage it makes sense to add more people to the committee. We're sort of too far along. Okay. Um, so tonight, uh, just to, to forecast, the thing I want to spend the most time talking about is our process in June, both getting the June dates firmly on the calendar, but also our process of how we are going to go about taking the information we've gotten, making meaning out of it, and getting something to the school board that's useful to them. So I'm gonna reserve the most time for that discussion because I'm sure it's gonna be meaty. Um, outreach efforts, I've circulated the, and to those of you online, if you check your email, we have a, um, there, I sent all of the documents to you that I have in printout. Um, I printed out the color version of this calendar. So we've had, we've had meetings with staff, we've had students at Roxbury Village School in Union Elementary, We've had some tabling. We've had uh, a green up day in Roxbury. We've had uh, the surveys. We've had the My Thought Exchange. Um, we've had two community gatherings at Union Elementary. And we've had one tabling, well, for me, one tabling interaction at the high school with students. Uh, and then the next few weeks, this week and next week, are pretty stacked with engagement, especially with students, and then two community gatherings this week, one in Roxbury and one in Montpelier. Um, I would like to try to get two more community gatherings on the books, possibly for that last week of May, first week of June. Uh, I think that's sort of the last chance to get meaningful input before we go into processing. Um, doesn't mean we can't re-engage in the future or try to fill some holes, but to me that the, um, that feels urgent. And I'm specifically concerned that we identify folks we haven't heard from, right? That continues to be a frontier. Um, Nick and I did some, went out into, who just showed up? Hi, Nancy, how are you? Good. Um, Nick and I went and knocked on some doors in, in Montpelier with of some families, and that was that was good, but it's sort of scratching the surface of getting to some of the population that at the time interacting with school. Um, I think Nick and I will do some more of that. But uh, and I'm also in touch with Amanda Garces, who's a member of the board, who had assembled, I think Amanda had led the assembly of the affinity groups. Um, and so I've been trying to 
get a response from her about what would work for meeting with those affinity groups to they had already given a lot of feedback to the district and Amanda's note to me when we met last time was that neither she nor they want to ask them to to sort of have the same conversation again they want that conversation to start with all the things that they've already shared and then move forward from there which is great uh, so i'm just waiting on a date and time or dates and times uh, as far as that goes I want to pause and just hear. We had this is a lot has happened, and so I want to hear from you know Kale and Carmen and Elliot uh, and Emily if you heard things. You know, what did you think about the session at the high school on Friday? Um, Tina, did you have thoughts? And Tina and Susie thoughts about the gathering at the Union Elementary? Um, you know, just always looking for. I think there are ways to refine this. There are probably questions. You know, when um, when Nick and I were down at Roxbury Village School meeting with the staff there, you know, we only had 35 minutes. And I know that Nick left that feeling like, oh, I, you know, I wish we'd had time to dig down deeper in this area and that area. So that's the, that's what I'm interested in hearing reflecting on. Um, I'm Was there a community gathering already? There were two. The first one was very quiet. Uh, we had, I have to look at my notes, but probably you know five people, one of whom was Susie, who's on the committee, one of whom was me, and one of whom was Rhett. So that's not a lot of public input. We didn't have a lot of time to promote that one. The second one was a little bit better. Um, Tina, Nancy Reed, Ken Jones, uh, Tim and Petra Nuara, Susie, Rhett, nine people or something like that. But really only four of them were community right. members. They were us and staff. Well, four, five, six, and then we Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my hope is that the Roxbury one this week is stronger and that the UES one this week is stronger. We've got more advanced time. I've been doing some outreach on that. So see what we can do. Do you two want to just report out on that? I mean, I see it, it seems like the time that we did have was productive. The first one was quiet, but that was also, I mean, maybe we didn't get as many people's inputs, but it gave us all the good time to get a chance to talk a lot. Um, and then the second one was very different for me. <laughs> there was a lot of differences of opinions going on. That was really too. And so, yeah, it was an hour and a half, and we talked the whole time. And I feel like we could have kept on talking, really. Uh, people have a lot to say when they show up, they have a lot to talk about. Um, I agree. I love talking education. So, great to have time to do that. I just think it's a very, very small uh, collection of people. Yeah. So I don't know what you can gather for, from so few people. From I also am not sure how well it would work with more people. You know, like I feel like the amount of people that were there, I guess if we were split into more groups. More groups, yeah. yeah. You know, there was me and four in my group, and that was it. That was all. That was like the top limit, I think, for productivity. Yeah. My my model would be to just have more groups yeah. because I felt, and I, I don't know to whom I said this at the end of that meeting, but there were a few participants where I feel like if there had been eight people or nine people in a group, we would have lost their voice. Yeah. And 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 we would have heard definitely from others, and so. Uh, the thing that I didn't do in that one that is in part of my plan, that is part of my plan, is to have the groups come back together midway through, do some sharing, and then either split out again or just keep that group together. But the conversations were being so productive, and the groups already had a little bit of a dynamic, and I decided that was the best path. 
but I don't know what your, you know, if you had a, if that felt well, accurate. I heard you filtered things from one committee to the other and saw you do it with us, so maybe that yeah. helped the conversation. I mean, it's a freewheeling conversation, so I'll be very interested to see how you can, I'll be very interested to see how you can coordinate that to the things you got off the service. Yeah. Right. Great segue. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, Carmen, Kale, Elliot, Joe, thoughts about the high school? Small. This is, I think it was like two, three people that were different. Um, but I think the, the, the uh, I think it was, was it Mira who had the, just like the going outside thing, not like go for a walk, but just like give each kid time to just be craziness that high school is or just life in general um so i just think i mean if we just you know i mean, said something emailed something or even just got more people feeling like that i mean i told my five people that i was going to hell and i got so um it's kind of just like that that's there but yeah i mean it was good in terms of so we're about to Friday, I can try and get um, more people to come. You know, I kind of forgot to text everyone I know for the last 10 minutes. But I felt like the setup was pretty nice and, and get comfortable for people to speak in. So. Would pizza help? Pizza <laughs> always <laughs> help, yes. Okay. I mean, seriously, you know, it's sort of, uh, I mean, it's funny, the community one, I brought some snacks and People barely touched them. I felt like I was eating the most. <laughs> okay, I brought snacks for myself. It was dinner time. <laughs> if, you know, if we need to say free pizza, comma, me, you know, like student gathering. Two, right two pizzas. Okay. That's it's on. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's the same day as the, uh, the Wednesday. Yeah, so that's why I was Rally for the planet. No, it's pizza for the planet. I always forget this people. Is that here or where is it? It's going to be here, here like in this courtyard area because like all the clubs are going to have tables and people will generally hold those. Okay. I wonder if they can be here. So. Can you all hear us? Wow. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. Speak up. Oh yeah. I was just thinking about the timing of it all. So to me that structure is sort of like the farmers market, sort of like the race for race against racism. It needs to be really simple engagement. Maybe one question, maybe Sage's idea of a quadrant. Go ahead. And definitely like candy on the team. So yes. The yes. Or like, or if people are standing in pizza line, if you have like a clipboard and you just went around and was like, oh, what, you know, what do you think about this? And how to be a simple thing that people can just. Yeah, when we did a pizza, when we did it here for up there with Joe, we did it like this. Yeah. Well, also, so last year I I helped make the pizza, and there ended up being a lot of people that just were standing around that I talked to, and kind of see to convert that into pretty informal. So, that should be good. so if I'm here, at 10, if I'm here at ten twenty, that's time enough to set up and just be present the whole time. And yeah, okay. Yeah, we would probably have to reach out to Yeah, because all the yeah all the tables go to So, so Carmen, you'll take the lead on contacting Sabo. Yes. I will. What am I? So is it just chum? Is it candy? Candy is really good. Yes. People, I have to say. Everybody, I think every club that's not here. Because every club that had candy at their table last year, like, people would just walk up. Yeah. Like, they didn't even I got it. I got it. Like, oh, right. right. They're yeah. not coming to Tootsie Roll. No, Smarties. Only Snickers and Twix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So be very shameless and be like, you only get candy. Oh yeah. Right oh, oh yeah. No, no. It's, yeah. You could like have like. I voted like, for student you president. Have, that like, one. Suggestion boxes and then like have a jar of candy and like take one. Yeah. Yeah. 
put one hand in here and then you can have the other hand in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, is it then worthwhile to come back that afternoon with maybe not pizza, maybe, I don't know what, for the Solon block? So there won't be a Solon yeah. block, that's the catch. Yeah, they, they okay. changed the schedule and everything. So, okay. But this is better, I think. Okay. Yeah. Solon block. You're, you're going to get me. every, instead of just, you know, five or six, you're going to get everything pouring through. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, Walker. Excellent. Thank you. Very helpful. This I place, wish something like that could happen at the middle school. Probably could if we ask. I, so my my approach yeah. there. <laughs> the middle school is a scary place. Yeah. Well, I mean, not like the, there's dances coming up. Middle school dances. Like I don't know. Just a way to like contact more kids. Yeah. So my approach. Like at the snack table. Yeah. <laughs> In front of the dance outside. Really fine. <laughs> yeah. So I think I've got. Uh, one, two, no, one, two, three, four in class sessions with middle school teachers lined up right now. And those will be, it looks like I'm getting at least 45 to 50 minutes with each. And so and it'll be you know, not quite a circle process, but that kind of organized discussion. Uh, I'm going to use probably just two prompts. We'll see how, how it goes. Um, I was going to come to that, but we'll talk about it right now. If anybody wants to join me for that, as long as it's not enough to make it an inquisition, it'd be great to have company. Um, maybe one to two other folks. Let me know. So it's on the back of the calendar. Um, the dates are the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 31st for MSMS. Immediately for students, that's right during school hours because that's when the kids are there. Um, white. Uh, yeah. <laughs> white that's right. it. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's no. That's the yeah, 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 yeah. So I can't do that. It doesn't feel like this great. Yeah, wait, is MSMS? Well, but. Nathan, I'm concerned that we will, after this, have a good impression of what the faculty. And the students think that practically no one tries to observe the community. Well, 275 survey respondents. Okay, so you're counting on the survey. Well, that's okay. I mean, these are the tools we've got. I, I want the community gatherings to be better populated. So I'm hoping that this week goes well. And if we can put another date or two on this calendar, um, you know. This is the balance between, you know, one of the things I heard earlier on, which I think is good, is go to the people instead of expecting the people to come, right? And not working. No, that prophecy is coming true, which is if we set up a community gathering, a few Tina's and Nancy's and Ken's show up, if we go to where yeah. other things are happening, that may be more productive. So I think that that's okay with me. Then the question is, okay, oh, okay, there's this. This tabling thing. So, what else? Um, you know, what else can I do? I going door to door with Nick is fine, right? That's a it's time consuming, but we got responses from basically everybody we talked with, which is great. So, uh, I am open to that. You know, I there's <laughs> drove by UES last week on one of the evenings, and there's a, there are like three families playing cricket on the playground in the evening. And I'm like, oh, I am definitely coming back here and I'm gonna engage these families, which I haven't done yet, but that's, you know, to me, that's the sort of, okay, I can get like seltzer and cheese and crackers and not, or the, the usual suspects show up. Okay, so try something different. Yeah. That's fine. Right. Yeah. And I just went to the, the middle school, was it last Wednesday, Thursday for, up for learning stuff, um, which I mean, the, the the questions were a little different than what we're trying to figure out, but uh, the questions were more aimed for like what do you, like, what was one of the questions like what would you change about school? In um, and everyone would say like I don't want my son to blah, blah, blah. but the thing is is that the, the the conversation changed extremely fast to them just asking me and peppering me with questions about the high school. Basically. So. I mean, I know this isn't really a thing, but like, 
middle schoolers, even seventh, because they're seventh and eighth grade, they want to know what their life in high school is like, especially right now. I mean, right, they're not interested in what the vision is. They exactly, exactly. Like they're I'm they're wondering, was it just the experience of having high school? So I think that I mean that was just something that helped very interesting. And then like you see, you know, like, the biggest look like things like who wants to work in high school? Like they're, they're not really caring about what they're like what they're gonna get out of it yet. They're just caring about like what they're staring at. There are many groups that can be targeted for middle school. Yeah, the kids who are involved in that Yeah, I mean yeah, no, I mean it was it was they're good things and we're going again next Thursday. We're just getting all the I guess they're called pods. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, right. Mm -hmm. They're like you know yeah. the seventh and eighth grade, they're like pods that yeah. uh, like I was with um, yeah, exactly. The once I was with the seventh grade, yeah. we had like eight or nine kids, but yeah. we were just going over there to like just explain not to explain. it we went over there just to explain what like restorative practices are to them, but it kind of just turned into them to ask them, what is it like to be a middle high schooler? Um because you know, especially for them, they've not really had a normal experience of middle school since they were right. sixth graders. Yeah, sixth graders. So let me just circle back um, for the in class sessions this week and next. Are, is anyone interested in coming along on that for middle school? It's okay. I don't think I can. Yeah. It's, I mean, like it's Mac Gavin in the little workday, so. Yeah, it does look like all the students be all of these Okay. The days that are earlier, the days that have early class, the days that are late. Yeah. You know, I put it to the, the teachers, there are teachers who signed up and said they'd be willing to do this, and then I put it out to them and asked them for time. And you can get them, so. Um, I'll go home and look at my Okay, great. That'd be great. Uh, so, that's what I'm aware of that's coming up. Tell me the thing on Friday. What's it called again? Pizza for people? For the people. For the people. Okay. I'm a people. I get some people. All right. Um, Joe and I are working on meeting with MHS faculty, which is a group I haven't met with yet. Um, I'm not. You know, I feel like I'm going to come, if we were to end this week, which we're not, we would have a lot of feedback, a decent amount of feedback from the elementary school kids. We'll have a lot from middle school kids and so far not a lot from the high school. So I'm not, I'm not yet convinced that even this Friday thing is going to sort of cover that ground for the high school students. Um, so I just want to keep, maybe it's the sewing block the following. I would totally be that. On the Friday, Friday. it's just the weirdest thing about Friday is it's shorter than the other one. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we try the CA in the Monday with the 40 minutes instead of the film on Black Friday with 25? Well, that's why I felt so short. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. is there a reason we can't do a, a Tuesday, Wednesday? Tuesday? No, I mean, if you just block out your, I, mean, I, I guess that's just that feels easier. I mean. I know a lot of kids who don't have things to do on someone block. I know a lot of kids who do. So I, I mean, that's what I always get blocked out for like really random stuff. On those kids. Okay. Um, is it a both end? Like, do we do multiple solo blocks? Maybe that same week we're meeting with the teachers, I think, perhaps? Yeah, I don't know how to teach it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have me too. I, you know, I, I will need to look at my calendar, but if that's the. If that's the week, uh, yeah, if that's next week, that should work for me. Okay. So that's always, what time is that? One o'clock. Okay. Um, so it's like possible to get more engagement done. So you could like send out a survey to all of the, like, I mean, just like take them to let them know that it's happening and like maybe mm -hmm. just give them a selection of the day or like, oh, nice. so that way we yep. can actually Schedule them for the solo block, so that way, yep. I mean, you're obligated yep. to come. But like, well, no, 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 I'll just get on the phone with Catherine Emily, and it'll be Emory Richardson <laughs> takes a report to two hundred five. Yeah, <laughs> you signed up. You need to show up. Okay, that works. I mean, I have it in the uh, adaptive schedule, like a visioning thing. Yeah, yeah. So we can we can definitely do that. Okay. Yeah, this is what people are like. I don't know, more aware, like 
just because I I know we did an announcement and like there's a sign on the door, but I feel like nobody really got it. Like most people weren't aware that it's going on. Yep. So. Okay. Yeah, it's still probably. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like the survey RSVP. Um, is that something that could, even if I draft it, could it come from one of you? Could, yeah. Or do you, I mean? Uh, I think it would be best if a teacher sent it out to like the MHS students, like email chain. You know what I'm talking about? Like I where do. it sends it out to every single MHS. I'll do it. Yes. Okay. I don't feel like I have the authority to do that, but. <laughs> I know that I can like go through you with you sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so just to put this in your heads, maybe I, maybe we don't schedule two more community gatherings and instead we pivot to, you know, I was postering on Sunday and I've- I saw a lot of posters. I did yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I ran out because I realized I gave a bunch, I put one up in Roxbury and then I gave a bunch to Rhett, which I'm trusting. I don't know, Amira, maybe you've seen posters in Roxbury, but, um, Yes, nod. Okay, that's good. So, you know, I put one up in the laundromat and I just thought, could, I was conscious that, you know, if I just put up a co poster in the co-op in Shaw's, because those are the two places I go, that's what I do. So, okay, laundromat. Okay, you know, and it may just be, you know, maybe I go sit in the laundromat for, I don't know when do people do laundry in the laundromat, Saturday morning, all the time, yeah. 5 a.m., mm -hmm. you know, and what are you going to do there? You're going to read People Magazine, you're going to talk to me. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll try to bring pizza. <laughs> <laughs> donuts, if you're going in the morning. Yes, yeah. donuts. Good. Yeah, I'm going to be really ill after this. Um, so, but but it, but it's also, I get a little nervous piggybacking, like the race against racism, we were piggybacking that we weren't the focus. We didn't have a great response. I'm okay to, I, I can be pretty um, engaging, read aggressive in <laughs> those scenarios. And that's fine with me, but that's not everybody's DNA. And I'm also, you know, if it's not really about us, then we are piggybacking. We're sort of getting the scraps, maybe. Whereas, you know, what what is what's the equivalent of a laundromat? What else is there? Isn't that what Nick does? Doesn't he have suggestions? Well, that's what when we're Nick and I are going. You know, okay, we're going to be at Cumming Street at the school bus pickup time. Oh, good. And that worked. So yeah, Nick definitely has those ideas. the family center that's up near your place, yeah. your place? okay that's great um coffee shops i'm just i was laughing to myself because we have a ton of people who have master's degrees right who, who saw go coffee to shop. go up to sagey in the coffee shop do you have a master's degree okay i don't want you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you schooling with? <laughs> yeah. so and probably you aren't going to find the people you didn't get at Captain Brown. That, that I don't want to kill. I don't want to shoot the the idea. Right. Yeah, but no. I think that the this uh, is how I'm thinking. Yeah. Go to the harvest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. And the, as they're standing in line, I just say, Kale, slow it down. I just want to talk to this person. <laughs> they're not ready yet. <laughs> okay. Chilios with the new big openings. Like as someone's talking. Hey, how's it going? I don't know that what I think about you having knowledge of Charlie O's. Uh, also, I don't know. I'm 
I've never actually, I don't even know where it really is. All I know it's in that big hill. I do. I, mean, I, I say, I introduce myself as, I'm, hi, my name is Nathan. I'm here because the school board is, the school district wants to know what our community wants for the future of education in our district. Uh, you know, can we talk about that or something like that? And, and I smile. And I open my jacket and there's Snickers bars. <laughs> you know, pizza. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's a good question. And I think actually, you know, I said I I'm happy to be engaging at events. I think part of what people get hung up on is not having a script. And so I'm happy to help with that. You can take mine, I can write it down, you know, if that helps. I was just wondering I was just asking all right can we move on to the next topic so the kale already told this part of the story which i appreciate so i, I want to talk about the next stage of the process which is going to be kind of compressed because i'm going to try to get a lot done in june we had a student at the at the high school I get to put my teacher hat on. We had a student at the high school say that one of the things they would really like is to just have time to take a walk. Right, that was the phrase. And in that moment, I pointed out to that student in the room the sort of that as in my role here, I, my temptation is to translate that into something that's going to fit in the boxes that we have or the you know that are part of education speak, right? So when that student says, I want time to take a walk between classes, is that a bid for mind, mindfulness? Is it, do I call that self-care? Do we, does, do I just say burnout? You know, what, right? Because the survey, the, the beauty of the survey is it's really clean, except for the, the handwritten, you know, the, the free answer stuff, which is also subject to this kind of interpretation or translation. But all the community gathering stuff, right? We got great notes from that one last week that Susie and Rhett were taking. Tina was there. Lots of got lots of good stuff was expressed. And how do we interpret some of that? Which, you know, as we're sort of coding this in our process and we're trying to come to the board, um, Rhett, Rhett's getting on. Okay. Um, I got it. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we saw that with. Uh, with my thought exchange where we had people talking about accountability in schools for students. And some of those comments were definitely what I'm describing as sort of law and order, like, damn it, those kids should get in trouble, they're being bad. And then some of it was a much more what Livia thought uh, couched expertly as um, inquisitive, what do you call it? Shoot, you had such a great phrase and it's a good, <laughs> uh, something inquiry anyway sort of there are two takes on accountability right is this a is a kid signaling that they need something by acting out or are they being bad you know and, and so as we get comments like that as a committee and we try to synthesize those and then bring it back to the board and say accountability okay what's the board you know what kind of information do we give the board to act on that? When somebody says time to take a walk, you know, in that interaction, I'm asking, is that about mindfulness? And I got sort of a half nod. And I'm not sure I got a full, like, that's definitely what I meant. Right. But that's kind of, that's really subtle. And, and then that puts me in a position of sort of translator who can heavily sway the direction of meaning here. Right. We're getting, you know, we're going to get, I'm just, I'm just going to just pause, hold that in your brain for a minute. We've had other comments that were clearly what I would call characterize as innovation in education and other comments about what I would characterize as sort of state standards and common core, right? Where I've, I've, we've had parents say like, school is about academics, academics. Like if they don't get Shakespeare, it doesn't count, right? And then we've had students and parents say this is 
like the equivalent of forget Shakespeare. Like we want to explore, right? So that's what those aren't always opposed, but they can be intention. We've heard I've heard a lot of more exploration, more self-directed learning. I want that sooner, right? This is something that we heard strongly in the high school group, you know, and we've heard um, we've heard what I'm going to call dethroning college prep as like the primary interest again from parents and from students you know partly partly that was pointing towards it's okay for people to learn trades or things like that you know college isn't the only path um, but some of these things are in opposition right if if I'm an educator am I really doing my job if I trust an 11 year old middle schooler to do self you know sort of exploration and learning and direct their own course of learning is that responsible we're not answering that question but we are going to give the board information that informs how they make those decisions and how libby and her team make, team make those decisions how am i doing okay jump in if i'm like this if i'm not character but i i wanted to tell this story and this story because i think we all need to understand that these are the kind of questions the district struggles with all the time. And what the, re the reason we're doing this process is to try to help them make good decisions in this. We're also getting, we're getting all kinds of feedback, right? If each one of these points is a piece of feedback, um, this one's kind of small. Um, you know, the red ones actually speak directly to vision. The black ones are about sort of how the district, should, like, you know, we should do restorative practices. And then the blue ones are details like, like I want to be able to take a walk in between classes. And so I, I feel like our job is partly to honor that we got feedback on details and at least hand that over to the board as like, this is what we heard. We can also do the same thing with the how, right? Like whatever. Restorative practices are PBIS, right? <laughs> like, that's not going to come out of a member of the public because that's education jargon, but it's something, but it's a PBIS is a how to manage behavior and, and create classroom norms, right? What we really want, what we're trying to do is get the vision and value stuff, but it's in this cloud with all these other things, right? So, um, the other thing I handed out is this other grid, this other black and white chart that has, you know, I'm happy in school. Uh, when I'm a grown up, I want to be a paleontologist or an architect, right? So that's an example of feedback we got from Union Elementary School students in our exercise last week that myself and Dottie did. And again, if you look in those columns, you know, I like, I like choice time. I like art. I like, right? So if we're going to take the input from Union Elementary School students seriously, we do have to do some translation and some distilling of what they mean or how to interpret that. And again, that gives us a tremendous amount of power. And I think we just need to be very careful about how we, um, you know, when someone says, I want time to take a walk, how much license do I or we have to say, oh, that's about self-care. We want more self-care for student experience. How, you know, or, so I think um, what I wanna do, one of our, one piece of our process is, if we're gonna put that in the self-care bucket, you saw Libby modeling this with the thought exchange report, was Libby saying, here's what we saw, we chose some buckets. She and Anna chose some buckets about what those things pointed towards. And so you've got this 25 comments that all pointed towards self-care. And so Libby created a bucket that said self-care. So I think our process is going to be somewhat similar where we need to decide what are we calling those things and then have some agreement about which pieces of this get into the self-care bucket and sometimes they're gonna get into two buckets because they speak to two things at the same time, right? And I think our job is also to be transparent so that 
anyone, including a member of the public, could just take the uh, could just take the executive summary. Okay, that's fine. Oh, what do you mean by self care? And we can say, oh, we had forty five comments or something that we thought pointed in that direction, and here they are. Does that make sense? Just as in, a, in the interest of transparency and because I think the granularity is important and because I don't think, even though I was sitting in the room and in the moment I said to that student, do you, when you say time to take a walk, do you mean mindfulness? Even, I had, even though I had the presence of mind to ask that, I'm not sure that I can be conclusive about what that meant, right? So my job between our, our job, Rhett said, Rhett said he would transcribe some of the things. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I will. I'll try. <laughs> so my job slash our job is to get a bunch of the stuff that's not in the survey and easily reported out into a computer, into a spreadsheet, kind of like the one from UES, and then start to code that into, I think this points in this direction. I think this points in that direction before next meeting, and then at next meeting, we're doing some sort of fidelity checking. Do we agree that these are the right buckets? Do we agree that this stuff fits in these buckets? So you're gonna do that with what came from the community groups and all those written things on the survey? Uh, we'll see. I mean, the, the, the cool thing about the survey is I can, I can do some sort of keyword type. This, this concept was mentioned a lot. So that's not, it's not quite as arduous as it might sound. We'll see. Um, but, part, but even if I get only a third of the way into that, that's enough that at the next meeting, we can do some group discussion about, okay, we agree that that points to this concept, right? Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's me checking that the assumptions I'm making match what you all are, you know, that we have some agreement on that. Libby, I was watching your face, and I just want to know if you have any well, other thoughts. No, it gets tricky same background but like are they still in the same sphere of I, I, I just no idea. exactly like that's that's something that i think that's interesting because like when i talk to most students no students really like very much i just wish we read more shakespeare and <laughs> learned more about arithmetic like you know that's not something that you know comes from that this group from the people i talk to but you know i totally see like even my parents will be like, oh, why didn't you re read blah, blah, blah. So like, I just wonder where that comes from, what side it comes from. And I don't know if you could make guesses on it. No, you I know, don't I've think had, you can. I've I just was wondering. Privileged, educated people in my office saying, stop paying attention to kids who are on free readings lunch, start paying attention to kids who are going, who want to go to Harvard. You need to pay more money that next group. Be in my office, say, my kid's going to go to Harvard regardless of what you do. I want you to just, I want them to be outside and create and, you know what I mean? And play in woods kind of thing. So it's, it's really hard. There's no one way people think. It's just. So there, there, there will be, Kel, to your point, you know, again, with the survey and with, you know, a lot of what we're getting, we are getting some extra card stuff. You know, what's your, what's your level of education? What, you know, what's your, what's your stake in this district? So we should have that generally, but not what he was talking about, item by item. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, you could have. Could have that's what I mean. So in the, as we as as we enter, you know, first of all, the survey data we can do that. You know, if I if I report on the survey demographics that I am a single parent, or that you know that, that, that I am that I am not always self secure, there are people who respond to that. There might be only twelve. 
or 15, so we can just say, okay, that group, folks who are food insecure, report being food insecure in the last whatever I had, six months. 70% uh, of them said yes. And it may be inconclusive, but, it, but there might be some compelling stuff there. Um, uh, so that's are there I mean are there any other comments or, or oh so here's the other thing I want to point out. Um this is language that I'll that I'm taking from the world of divorce attorneys. <laughs> It's actually about negotiation as well. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and, then, and these are the, these, these two words. One is interests and one is positions. And so I'm just going to illustrate it as though this is a divorce. Um, if I'm getting divorced and I'm saying in these processes, uh, I want 50% of the week with my kids, period. Right? And I think that that's like, that is the, the, the thing I'm never going to move on. I'm never going to give that point up. The people involved in this would say, that's not an interest, that's a position. And my interest is, what we want to get to is that my interest is I want to have a long-term meaningful relationship with my kids, right? So that's the interest. And I, I haven't named that because I'm fighting. I'm in a fight, so I'm naming a position. When in fact, we want to get back to the interest. And so... If we think about this process in terms of the district, in terms of the people we're interacting with, a lot of what we're going to hear is positions, right? Details, how, what we're interested in, what we want is we want the interests, right? That's the vision. I want, I want my kids to be uh, socially and emotionally, I want their emotional intelligence to be high. I, you know, the, the core stuff is the interests. There are lots and lots of things that we're going to hear that are positions. And so that's that's another way of talking about how we're in the, how we need to go about distilling what we've heard into something that we can give to the board. And we can give the board both, right? We can say these are our positions, or the how people think we should run the district. That's not what we were asked to do. And this is the evidence that supports. Those interests, if that makes sense. Yeah, so. Are going to do all of that? Oh, no. Okay. So <laughs> that's why we're but, giving them the big box. Uh, but, but I need to do a bunch of it, right? It's not reasonable to think that we are going yeah, to, all work as a committee, um, so, but I'm partly, I'm trying to forecast, this is, this is, this is how I'm thinking about this. I want us to be thinking about this this way. And when I come back two weeks from now with some draft products, I want you to have some understanding of how I got there and why, and be able to say like, you know, call, what was it? Joe's favorite or Nick's favorite, you know, call baloney. I'm like, I think you got that one wrong or when that person said that, that's not what I was hearing at all, right? We have to be keeping each other honest and being, you know, with as much integrity as we can possibly muster, translating what we've heard and handing it to the board. But that's why I'm also saying, you know, we need to give the board all of it, right? If somebody on the board says, that doesn't smell right, they should be able to pick, lift it up and look underneath and what came, you know, what said that. Um, so, you know, some of it's just a data entry in me, in my so-so typing, getting it all in there. And then it's sorting and recognizing that some things point to two things and some things don't. But it is, yeah, so um, I can help transcribe the documents. Uh, that's great. So what I might do is hand you, like I have one middle school session, middle school teacher session, which those teachers could write, <laughs> produced a lot. So that, but that's discrete and it's all sort of organized in folders of like, anyway. So I might just hand you, okay. yeah, okay, that's awesome.
Um, yeah, it's getting chilly. Folks online, I'm going to sit down and stop yapping for a minute. Are, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, it comes in and out a little bit, but uh, in general, I feel like following along pretty well. Hopefully the stuff you heard was all the smart stuff. Yeah, it was mostly not from you, so it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an idea of buckets? I love the idea of starting this process of trying to figure out how to get things into categories or whatever we want to call it. Are you kind of suggesting some of them now or are you, have you yet to sort of figure out the general realms or are you? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is no, I'm not there yet. But the longer answer is, you know, when we were at the community gathering last week, it, a lot of it, I think, becomes self-evident, right? So we, your group and the other group were getting into some of the nuts and bolts of, of education and why, like, what do we want out of our schools? You know, because folks were talking about how they imagine their kids ending up or going through this experience. Um, I trust that I trust that a lot of it's going to be straightforward, and then a, and then some thirty percent is going to be very sticky. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So just to circle back to make sure that I've got what we covered today, I'm not hearing people say schedule more community gatherings. I'm hearing some enthusiasm for laundromat, Dunkin' Donuts, library, story time, that can go to where the people are. I'm all for that. Um, I will continue to put out offers. Hey, I'm going to go do this. Anybody want to come? And it's, I just will say, it's really fun. It is fun. Yeah. I fun. I, so, it, you know, if you can make time, it's really fun. It's fun to talk to people. It's fun to hear what they have to say. I'm constantly surprised. Um, Carmen's going to coordinate with Zabo. Uh, we're going to do solemn blocks, multiple solemn blocks next week. And... Emery, do you want to just, even if you just outline what you think that survey should look like, or is it just an RSVP of like, we're doing yeah, these three days? I can create a survey and submit to the show. Okay, awesome. Um, up for learning at MSMS, Libby, you jumped on that as a possible inroad. I've got a lot going on at MSMS. Do I need to add that? Is there? No, but it's also another community group here at the high school. Well, I, I work for that. Yeah. Who know how to articulate okay. a lot of things <laughs> okay. in, a, in a good way. So it's not a bad, it's not a bad outlet to get more thinking. So how when uh, how how often do they meet? We meet every Thursday. We go, we're going I think we have like a larger meeting sooner than later. I forget what the date is. Um, we're going to the middle school this next Thursday or Wednesday. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Um, I mean, the questions we asked last week were, uh, what is a, uh, we asked about schedule, like, well, what about tweaking, like, what, what about the schedule would you like to change? Um, what, what, what was it? If you had a button to choose anything different about your school experience, 
experience would it be? And then the final question is just like, what experiences have you had outside of school that you kind of wish happened more often? Um, but yeah, I mean, anything that like super, like, I mean, we, we kind of did as like less harmful, not harmful, uh, less scary questions for the middle school, just because it was our first time over there. All those questions seem like yeah, I do too. questions yeah. that totally are what we're talking Irrelevant. about. I mean, the, the biggest thing that we noticed was that, as I said earlier, every every a student was like, just what is what is the life of a high schooler like? Um, and that. how is That's it different than mine? Yeah. Right. So, it would be hard to get beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. So how did, how did you, did you capture those things? or was Yeah, it we do. Like, I have a doc I can share. I'll ask on this Thursday and I can share it with you. Okay. Um, also, Nathan, how open to like interpretation are we going to be? Because like, if I hear that, if a whole room of students is like, I'm really scared about the high school, like one part of that could just be that there should that we need like that these kids are valuing like smoother transitions through buildings. Like, do we make those sorts of jumps, or is it closer by those? Uh, I think. I love that you asked it, right? Because you're recognizing that the impulse to to translate that, the, oh, that that means this. So I think in the best case, in the moment, you say, okay, wait, can we pause and can we drill down on that? You know, are you concerned about the transition? You know, what you just get a little deeper, and that's the that's the beauty of the engagement as opposed to a survey. Survey, there's no there's no follow up. Um, so first choice, ask more. Second choice, I would say look for, are we hearing that elsewhere? Right, there's like frequency, and then there's also, um, uh, you know, sort of granularity or detail. And so if we're hearing that a lot, sometimes we might hear it coupled with another thought, and we might remember that interaction. They were definitely talking about this. It's not perfect. I think the other thing to be careful of is not to go to the group that's a conclusion. So, depending on what the problem they have to figure out. I mean, I still be asked this before we really ask, like, is the solution money? Is the solution time? And what, like, what is, like, what is the school, I mean, Mary, you're on school, right? Yeah. Like, what, I mean, I guess they don't have the problems yet, but, like, is there any, like, what is the, I would have. say they do have the problems, but all they the time. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but they don't have the problems that we're about to outline to them, so, or the but interests. That's part that, of the issue, but yeah, they know some of the problems. They're hoping from this conversation they will hear problems. Maybe they didn't know. That. Well, also, like they certainly know a lot of the problems. I think it's this is about kind of how they approach these problems and the severity of these problems, or. Well, I think it's more that the school board's in charge of ensuring that the vision of the community for the schools is realized and we have the programming in place. It's not about problems. It's about what's the ideal educational system for that this community can be used for kids. Um, but and you are not expecting this group to tell you how to solve that. Right, or right. How to accomplish that. You're just expecting them to give you information about what it is right like i mean the uh, to time to take a walk is a really good example right i wouldn't say it's any of those things i'd say it's about wellness and wellness has many different facets in it that includes mental health wellness and physical wellness and financial wellness and you know and so how so then if the the board ultimately will create something that's called ends and then i report out on those ends Right? What are ends? Ends are like sure. the ends goals. for you all. Like, oh, I was imagining just a bunch of ends no. with like bullet points <laughs> next to them. So if an end is that is that Montpelier Roxbury students um, exhibit uh, this isn't very well articulated, but exhibit a life um, with evidence of wellness or confidence in their wellness, then if that's an end goal, it's like an end goal, right? Then Stagey on the board and Brett on the board would expect me of multiple times throughout the year to report out on that. What exactly are we doing? What intentional actions are we doing to increase student and staff wellness? Um, and how are we defining that? 
it's so tricky because like to me self-care is part of wellness and mindfulness is part of wellness so it's yeah it's like the words and trying to categorize things is going to be the hardest part of our job yeah and the vision piece of it is broad yeah so that there should be multiple avenues for kids and staff to access that because you know, Joe knows this about me. If somebody tells me in a group to sit and do mindful breathing activities, nothing will make my heart beat faster yeah. and get more anxious and anxiety for too pretty deeply with a group of humans, right? <laughs> Whereas Joe might think that's like Joe's like, yes, that's common and it brings everybody together. You know, like it, that's just but if you ask me to go play basketball with a group of staff, like, oh that's great, you know, that's wellness for me. So it's there should be, it's, the theme should be broad enough where the school district, the administration, the staff, the kids could all come into it and say, let's, let's make it work. Let's make it happen. And there are things you will hear that nobody can solve. Like the school board can't solve. That's not going to be within their realm. And, and I, I think, Susie, to your, you know, Libby just said, this is about wellness. Well, I my first impulse was it's about mindfulness or self-care. Those could just be slightly smaller concepts that fit within the broader wellness concept. And part of that's us agreeing, okay, yeah, yeah. Wellness is the biggest bucket, but all these other things fit into that. Um, something you just said, Tina. Uh, they can't solve everything. Oh, well, can't solve everything. Okay. So, one of the things we've asked in the survey and then asked at staff groups and a little bit at the community gathering, which came up organically, is the question of what things might the schools hold or be, or be a, a, a node for, right? Dental care, uh, vision tests, uh, direct connection to social services. I don't, you know, there's a whole... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't see that Libby just demonstrated that her heart starts racing when we bring that stuff up but but even if that's that starts to maybe be a solution but the fact that we're getting input about that that we can then hand to the board and say when this came up here's what folks here's the range of things that folks said I think will be useful to them because those are gigantic questions yeah and people had a lot of passionate opinions about those things. Can I ask what the question exactly was that you posed that got this result? Nathan had a sheet of questions. Uh, I don't remember specifically what they were. Oh, okay. I mean, um, it's... And it got to a free ranging conversation. Yeah, we were oh. talking about everything. Like you say, that just seems like you had to, have, something would have had to have clicked to get there from what I thought you'd be asking. Yeah, so that that question is in my mind, and it's part of um, it's a little bit part of the the, the broader survey. The, the prompts at the community gatherings were something like, "Imagine a student in, in a community." It's the same prompts we had at the yeah. high school, but I'm listening for you know where is this conversation going in a few, in both groups. Um, you know, I was pointing out we had two people in one group, one of whom was saying. Damn it, we have to have Shakespeare or it yeah. doesn't count. My group, I was like, did they even set me up? Because no. it was like there was four people, the two were total opposites, and the other two were total opposites. And it was sort of funny, but I was trying to be neutral. But but so the you know, there was there was that interest or that position, and then there was another um there was also the let's be responsive to Changing high performing time. kids and you know, high need kids and you know, at one point I said, okay, those two things might be intention, right? If you move towards standardization, there's loss for the outliers. If you move towards serving the needs of the outliers, there's maybe got to be flexibility or loss in standardization. That's why I love the community gatherings. Those conversations are really powerful. And, um, and there was a big conversation with me about why you need a good teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which we knew. <laughs> well, so that led There's to. There's also some bias, though. And what, yeah. And what you just say, a, a kid who's eligible for free and reduced lunch is very well be a high performer. So right. <laughs> like there's right. some bias in, in our language that uh, people need to. Yeah. 
recognized as well. Well, and the, the good teacher kind of led to it. Funny. Well, <laughs> but it led me to ask both groups um, to think about it sort of through that lens. What is the criteria for that? No, what are the critical elements to success? I don't know quite how I asked it, but there seemed to be broad agreement that like great teacher is a is a is a key thing. Okay, what else is it? Is it you know student shows up um, able to or ready to learn, right? Which points to like I had breakfast and I got to sleep last night and I didn't you know I don't come from a house with trauma or whatever. Right. Well, and, and that a good teacher for you may not be the good teacher. That, that was what I was going to say. I, was saying, yeah. I have a lot yeah. of teachers what's, that people don't that like that. Well, yeah. that was, that was that the thing because yeah. it's the specific person that was really cheering on the good teachers, the super teachers of the world, was should, teacher? should be capable of everything by themselves in the classroom. Was what they were saying? or That's what the oh. that's what one Joe Carroll superhero paper was saying. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Just this conversation was, <laughs> he has the greatest grading system ever one knew something would happen today <laughs> so well, that issue of good teacher is like the same issue of the only place we send our kids every morning is to school and so because we don't have anything else that we send our kids to we often expect schools are going to solve anything that involves our kids and we can't do it all sorry to say or they can't do it all yeah. maybe joe could but the rest <laughs> of us couldn't do it all <laughs> and even really great teachers can't do it all yeah. right okay This is a little bit, I don't know if you remember early meetings when there were a lot of questions about what's our product going to be, what's our final product going to be like? And I wasn't answering it very specifically then, and this is kind of why. I think Mel, Mel wanted to say something. Oh, good. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Red. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I like in, in hearing what's come up at all of the community gatherings and like the, the points that conflict with another like it just paints the picture of what we've been talking about this whole time which is that we all have different brains and so maybe if you like I mean so in interpreting people's comments is one thing but like maybe it's actually about zooming way out and saying the community wants different things kids need different things maybe that's the end of giving people uh, gi giving options I don't know um, but like, if you don't zoom out far enough, you end up maybe interpreting something that misses the big picture. We definitely talked a lot about, it kind of came down to like, there are people that want very different things. And do we, can the school offer very different things in the same building? Can the school offer very different things in the same classroom structure? Like, is that even possible? You know, do we have one type of school that you, want your kid to do and then one other type that's it, it it's like what is possible because people do want very different things yeah. no you would have loved it there was a one of the people at that community gathering talked about teaching in a classroom of grades one through six and another person in the same group said really in this country <laughs> so, and and uh and so there was you know clearly for some people that sounded revolutionary even though other people might say that sounds like a one-room schoolhouse from back in the day um so there was there was that range and and i asked you know would you would you all ask the district to make sort of a school within a school where you have one cohort that's montessori approach or something they use that word because it's easy and then another that's more um more traditional schooling approach and got some very strong reactions right away. <laughs> like that. Is I that? Think, I think Mel's right, though, that the overall piece is the broadness of the idea, yeah. and then it's up to um, it's up to me to present some ideas to the school board based on what staff is saying and based on what the administration is saying, the students are saying, the school board saying, yeah, that's the right direction, or no, you need to change the direction, get some more information, you know, so. But 
themes have to be broad. Yep. And even the very opposite circle, right at the end, <laughs> started to be like, you know, on the same page. Not exactly, but like you get down to or up to a broad enough picture that it's all kind of the same. I think I, I think that there 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 ultimately inevitably there are going to be times when not everyone gets what they want, and I think that if we don't have this process, we can't say this is why we made the choices that we made because. They're ultimately because there are limitations to what can be offered, um, and there are limitations to how high up you can go when you're looking down. There are limitations to the availability of staff. And there are just going to be limitations, and I think that if we don't have a way to say why we made the choices, then we're we're not we're not able to move forward in a way that that works best for the most people it possibly can. Red, did I tell you I met a gentleman named Eric, somebody other in Roxbury that day? Homeschools both his kids? No. Like the call, I can't remember his last name, but I've got it. Um, we had a Did you drive a Mercedes? Uh, he was a wagon? No. A, I think, no, okay. Like a Lexus or a, uh, or a Toyota. <laughs> Toyota, you know, Sequoia, like all-wheel drive. No, there's there's one there's one gentleman that has this really old Mercedes wagon, and it's 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 just it's really it's really awesome. He really I could, I see him putting stuff on top of it. He's just really really ingenuitive in how he uses it. It's, it's he's made it go a long way. But my my point was that the uh, this this guy was clearly. Homes, I'm homeschooling my kids. You know, they don't need to. They don't need to be having social media. They don't need to be near phones. They, you know, there, there were sort of the, you had described before that there were some, um, some people with strongly held opinions in Roxbury, and I, it was nice to see that up close in the sort of, right. Sometimes the sort of, the broad edges of the the, the far ends of the spectrum help you understand how wide our district ranges in terms of what people wish for. And I've had those conversations, but not with families from Roxbury, but with families from Montpelier. Oh, sure. I do right. not give my kids their computer. I want them to have everything written on paper. They are not to be touching their phone with school. They don't want to talk to them more. Which, which them? <laughs> Whoever's saying. Yeah, you know what happens? <laughs> the kid just takes your phone. <laughs> it's on social media. It's on your paperwork. <laughs> All right. Uh, what can, can I ask one more question that just occurred to me that I don't know that we've necessarily talked about? So we're talking with all these people, and I mean, most people don't necessarily distinguish between wants and needs. There's lots of people who think they have needs, but they're really talking about wants. How do we actually figure out what aspects of vision relate to needs? Like we're trying to meet the majority of people's input, but we're really talking about the, the needs, but like the people aren't necessarily telling us about their needs or telling us about their wants. But there are people that that gets kind of muddy because we have people whose needs are not being met and they may not be able to necessarily articulate it that way, but how do you sort that out or how do we sort that out and how do we ask people to sort that out a swimming pool would be good. that was my very first meeting yeah are you joking about that that was when i took no, over I'm serious. on july 2nd my first day of superintendency my very first meeting was somebody walking into my office and saying stop messing around just put a swimming pool at that high school yeah. was that on the roof <laughs> like, well, okay. i think that one's come a long way <laughs> Uh, Mel, from behind the screen, I think I think I, that's a good question, and that's to me related to the sort of interests and positions um, thing I articulated earlier. And I think to to the good for us, we don't necessarily have to make all that 
all those sorting choices, right? We do need to sort between the things that are definitely pointing towards vision and the things that are pointing, trying to tell the administrators how to run the schools kind of thing. Um, I think the school board, you know, Kale was asking earlier, what's the solution? Is it just more money? And I think the school board is, does face the question you asked Mel all the time, right? And even between needs, there may be some that aren't met because we don't have resources and that resources can be time, people, money. Um, so I think it's good for us to recognize, you know, if, if we want to do that as part of our sorting, we can do that, but we don't have to make those hard decisions. The school board gets to make those. Or, or Libby. can't determine what, whether we want or need. It's hard for them to determine. And it may be hard for us to, I mean. Right. For everybody to determine, but like, I'm just like speaking just as someone who like, professionally mostly works with people with visible and invisible disabilities. I just, um, we, we also really wanna be thinking about that and we're not necessarily collecting that kind of demographic data. I just want us to be sensitive to like, when we're, when we're talking about various aspects of the environment, some of these things are needs and not wants for some people. Mel, I think it'll be interesting. I mean, I, partly I hear your comment and think through the lens of access, and I think it'll be interesting as we as we are sorting things into buckets. There will be, a, I think, a lot of examples where contributions people have made fit into multiple things, and I could see access as a theme affecting a lot of the input or being relevant to a lot of the input. Does that resonate with you? Okay, great. I'll try to be, there we go. Now I can see your thumb. <laughs> All right. Um, is that if people aren't having their needs met, then they don't show up ready to like absorb anything. So they're not accessing any good from school if they're, if they're not having basic needs met. So I would think that sometimes that might be obvious in a person that they're really struggling. What, are, what, what do they need? Other times, like Mel said, it's invisible and maybe not known as much so do we just assume that there's people who that aren't having their needs met whether they say, say it or not or whether they see it or not and build in things to make sure that's being accounted for i don't know well because we've got a few minutes left and it's fun to see libby libby's heart race um oh, i ask you to what <laughs> Group breathing, no, I won't ask you to do group breathing. Um, you know, but uh, to your point, Susie, if if we end up with one of the vision statements saying something to the effect of all Montpelier, stu all Montpelier Roxbury students are available for learning or something very broad like that, the implications, the cascade of implications from that are that, or could be read to be, we're feeding these students, we are connecting them with therapy, we are, you know, all these things, right? It's like, um, like Mel, are there specific things that you think of that seem just like so obvious that are being totally missed and not talked about by anybody? Yes. Or <laughs> I thought you did. Um, so there's only four minutes left to the meeting. <laughs> Better start start now. Um, well, I'd like, you know, I, 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 this is, this is bigger than uh, just summarizing, but it, we, so, so my nonprofit organization, we hosted um, UVM from, at the Center on uh, Disability and Community Inclusion last week. They did a, an event on what do kids wish school was like? It was fascinating. Um, so we had kids live talking, using Jamboard, typing in the chat box, having their parents as their proxy, but they were there. Um, we had kids who like interviewed other kids and shared their perspectives. We're now about to send out the recording. I can send it to all of you. Um, and it's still open for, for input. It's not gonna be like, if they're not all MRPS people. Um, so we can't necessarily um, 
abstract out our community's values from this, but the, 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 the themes were really interesting and they have a lot in common with the themes that kids have given us. Um, and when I think about access, I think that there are so many of my patients that are in a state of fight, flight, freeze, fawn, fatigue, like they are dysregulated, like all day, they cannot access their education, so many of them. And it's gonna be very individual about what that is, but there are some pretty common themes of, um, of, of their sensory processing experience, of the way directions and instructions are given, um, of the way that um, behavior is managed. Um, these are really important themes. And I, that's why I find it so interesting to ask kids because they all, they said this stuff. They said that the, the, the kids I didn't know said the same things that the kids I do know said, which I found very interesting. Okay. No, I think that, well, when I was listening to what you just said and thinking about uh, the buckets I drew on the board, you know, the vision versus the how we go about making schools happen and then the details and um, in the comments you're just describing them, you know, if you back up to 10,000 feet, what, what are the vision, what's the vision or what are the visions or what are the values that then will help a school or help a school board think through the lenses you described about, you know, the sort of universal design for learning type stuff, right? Um, how do we, how do we evolve schools so that more teachers are responsive to the question of how instructions are given and how that affects learning, right? So I, what I want to do is just keep pushing to back up to the 10,000 foot. What are the, what are the, what are the sort of powerful vision pieces that lead us to being more responsive to some of the things you just articulated? I think Mel's professional point of view is super important because I know personally two kids who went through the school system that just utterly failed. And they're both brilliant and I love them both. They just did not have what they needed. And their parents won't fill out a survey or pride and they don't even want to have anything to do with it anymore and so i think that if you know your voice can be voices that aren't being heard i think that's helpful all right mira how you doing Pretty good. Um, I did, I do have two people um, that I found for, that could, are interested in helping with the childcare at RVS on the 25th. Um, so I'll email, I'll CC them in an email after this meeting. That is awesome, thank you. Um, before I lose everybody in the negative one minute we have left, our, we have scheduled meetings in June with the 6th and the 20th, but we need to go with 6th and 13th. Uh, the, still on Monday, right? Yeah, still on Monday. Whatever, I, I'm not even going to ask if that works for people. It's just, it's the best date we've got because it's before school ends. After that, we lose Libby to you know, Tahiti or wherever Libby's going. And, um, and I suspect we will, the students will be on to other things as well. So what days are the Six and 13. I will actually miss the six, I'm sorry. My, my son is playing. It's oh, cool. Fast, so we, we will not have your input. Long. Yes, <laughs> you, you gotta go. Going to have one at nine. No, it would have been the June sixth or the thirteenth. Did we? Did we? Did we already try to find another? Okay. You had me scared there for a minute. Are you not going to be the person next year? The 
Nope, you still got me, Kale. Don't get rid of me yet. All the all the turnover we can handle in admin. Please don't wish for more. All right. So June 13th. I will just reinforce the June 13th uh new date via email. And thank you all for showing up tonight. Sorry for the people who are chilly, including me. It's great to see you. Uh I'm really appreciating the input. Yeah. Yeah. Good night, y'all. Thanks, Rhett.